Once upon a time, an ancient Indian legend begins. There was a city called Dwarka, a city so wondrous and beautiful that Hindu scriptures describe it as a fairy tale kingdom. Prasad Lakshair Navavir Jushta, Dwarka boasted 900,000 royal palaces, all constructed with crystal and silver and plenteously decorated with huge emeralds. The city was filled with birds and bees flying about the parks and pleasure gardens. Ruling over this magical kingdom was the handsome, generous and much adored Krishna, the Hindu god of devotion. Krishna is God, but he comes down on this earth and takes the form of a human being. He falls in love. He plays his flute. He fights with darkness, with demons. He gives good lessons to people. One day, Krishna is called upon to help his friends in a bloody family feud of greed and possession, of good versus evil. The story is a David and Goliath battle. Krishna and his five friends against 100 evil cousins. And its source, the Bible of the Hindu world, the Mahabharata, one of India's most revered scriptures. The Mahabharata also tells of Krishna's end. His city, the golden kingdom of Dwarka, swallowed by the sea and lost forever. until now. Excavations off the west coast of India have led to what may be one of India's most amazing discoveries, as significant to the Hindus as finding Noah's Ark might be to the Christian world. Could the fictional account of Krishna's life be a record of actual events? And could these incredible underwater remains be what is left of the mythical kingdom of Dwarka? Find out when Mysteries of Modern Asia returns. Dwarka, lying on the western coast of India, off the Arabian Sea, is a fishing town, home to 52,000 people. It shares the same name as the legendary magical kingdom described in the ancient Hindu scriptures. But the only similarity between the two today are the thousands of pilgrims who come here to worship Lord Krishna, the Hindu god of devotion. The tales of Krishna and his lost city were long thought to be a mythical legend. But a recent archaeological discovery may prove that Krishna's Dwarka actually lies beneath these very streets. I took up the challenge to find out if really Dwarka existed. Dr. S. R. Rao is one of India's most preeminent archaeologists. Twenty years ago, he was called to the town of Dwarka to excavate this temple. We came to remove a modern building which existed here because that was obstructing the view of the temple. During what he thought would be a simple excavation, he came upon an amazing discovery. An ancient temple lying intact, just beneath the first one. Then we started digging further deeper in order to know if there are earlier temples. What he found was layer upon layer of temples, built one on top of the next. Three millennia of history in just 100 feet of soil. But it was beneath the last temple that Rao came across an amazing find that would change his life forever. Shells, pottery shards, and iron artifacts. What appeared to be the remains of a city washed over by the sea. Rao immediately thought of the stories from his childhood. Could these be the remains of the lost city of Dwarka? 
The answers, Rao believed, lay in the pages of the ancient Hindu scriptures of the Mahabharata. Krishna's Dwarka is only one story in this legendary Hindu epic. Written in the ancient language of Sanskrit, the Mahabharata is the longest poem in the world and to Hindus as sacred as the Christian's Holy Bible. The story of Krishna ends with his kingdom, the city of Dwarka, sinking into the ocean. So, Rao headed for the sea. But finding a lost city at sea would prove to be a challenge. But the whole question was where to look for this submerged city of Dwarka. I mean, in the sea you are not sure where to find him. Rao began randomly searching areas close to the coast of modern-day Dwarka. At first, it proved harder than he had envisioned. Divers wrestled with the strong currents of the Arabian Sea and murky waters. But his efforts soon paid off. Not far off the coast to present-day Dwarka, Rao and the divers stumbled upon a discovery even greater than he had imagined. On the fourth day, we found these blocks of stones used for construction. Seventy feet beneath the waves lay the remains of what appeared to be an underwater metropolis. Massive sandstone walls, streets with cobbled stones, a drainage system, and a huge gate all pointed to a large city. Thousands of three-hold anchors, identical to those found in Cyprus and Syria from the same time period, implied a bustling port. Rao then followed the trail of ruins to an island located 19 miles out to sea. It was here, not far from modern civilization, that Rao came across another discovery. Standing in plain sight for centuries were the remains of a walled structure. First we saw what was on the shore, and uh, that was a, a small bit of uh, the big part fortification. And as we went further up, we came across that 150 meter long one. Rao's discoveries became a lifelong mission. Over the next eight years, his excavations eventually uncovered the remains of a sprawling city of around 10,000 people.